Hey everybody, it's me, Sintel. I'm the creator of Scourge of the Seas. I wanted to talk to you a little bit about this map and also let you get to know me a little bit, um, what brings me as a creator to Rec Room. So I spend my day as a, a programmer and I come into Rec Room to play with circuits because that's what I enjoy doing. I enjoy helping people on Discord. So some things you may have seen that I've done. I made a working Monopoly room completely with circuits. I also made this cool Simon game you can play with. I'm also working on this giant medieval capture point game with rolls. So I've been watching how Scourge of the Seas has been doing this week, and I was really excited to see that almost 1,800 people have come to check out this room. But when I started looking at the pictures and checking the scoreboard, I realized that people weren't coming here to play the game. They were just coming here to take selfies with the skull on the beach. Um, and I've already said, like, I'm not an artist. Like, I like to do... Uh, the technical side of things, right? I like to build game mechanics. I'm trying to bring you things that are fun, new experiences. I'm trying to make stuff for you that's not, you know, the same weapons, the same game in just a different city or a different, you know, atmosphere. Um, so I wanted to show you a little bit of what in went into this game and hopefully get you uh, to come back and give it a try and actually play the game and try something different. Bring your friends. You might have a fun time, right? So I'm going to pop open the gadgets and kind of show you what's going on with this a little bit and then show you how to actually play a game. I said, you know what, maybe some people don't know how to start this game. All right, so, so let me kind of show you what went into this and how everything works. So I'm going to turn on the gadgets in here. All right, and you're going to start to see a lot of trigger zones and stuff like that. So <laughs> just give me, give me a second here. All right, so there is a lot of stuff going on in this room, right? We have... Wind condition circuitry, we have player kill circuitry, we have betting and game start circuitry, we have uh, wager circuitry, we have double your double your one winnings and steal the money from your opponent's circuitry, we have the round circuitry, we have circuitry to make sure that if the first team wins within five minutes, then the second round is five minutes long, right? Um, all these forts that you see. There's circuitry for the cannons. There is uh, state machines for the firing sequences. There's trigger zones around this so that when you shoot it with the cannons on the ship, it damages it and disables the cannons. Okay? And then there is the uh, ship controlling circuitry, which handles uh, speed setting logic, uh, changing the heading angle to a slope function, um, making the ship's position resettable, and then ship cannon firing circuitry. So... The reason that when you look at a room like this and are seeing that it's not as detailed is some of these rooms that have just amazing, incredible artwork. It's because the circuitry takes up all of the space I have, 100% ink. You can see that that's all consumed by the circuits that I have. Okay? So, I, and again, this room is entirely me as the builder. There's no co-creators on here or co-owners. I built this entire thing. Um, so I'm really hoping that people come in here and check it out and actually try the game and have a little bit of fun with it. Okay? Um, so let me turn off the circuitry so you don't have to look at that. And let's start this game up. So in order to start this game, you do need a minimum of four players. And you're going to need that because to do the ship, you're going to need at least one person steering the ship and one person shooting the cannon. So you got to have minimum four players, so bring a couple friends or maybe meet some new friends in the rec center, okay? The way you start this game is everybody has to touch this skull at the same time, and that's because there's a wager involved. I don't want somebody to, to trick you and you come into the room and they start the game and it takes uh, money away from you. So, in order to start the game, it's pretty simple. Everyone just has to touch the skull at the same time. Now, I disabled the circuit that says I need four people, so I'm going to be able to start this game by myself. But when you do this, you need four people, all right? So we're going to touch the skull, and the game is starting. Game on! All right, so I'm starting as a pirate, okay? I get a sword, and I get a gun, just like everybody else in the game. I'm going to put these on my holster, and I'm going to start the ship. All I have to do to start the ship is hit the speed button. One click for speed one. Two clicks for two, three clicks for three, and if I click it again, it'll go back to zero. Now, the ship drifts. It it doesn't go on, off speed instant, right, like, like a sailing ship would. It takes a little while to get up to speed. To change the heading of the ship, I just place my hand on the wheel, and you can see that we're now coasting to the right side. All right? So if I'm doing that, I want to communicate with my other pirates and let them know that we're coming up on the right side of the island. They need 
to reposition those cannons, okay? To reposition the cannon, you hold down the elevation button for two seconds, and it'll swing the cannon around to the other side so you can attack from either side of the ship, okay? And normally if I want to change the elevation, I just give this a few clicks. One, two, three, four, five resets it, okay? If I want to fire it, I just click the fire button. And it'll fire a cannonball at the side. Now, remember what I said about those forts. The other team is going to be firing at you with their cannons. You want to keep their cannons disabled as much as possible. So, you want to make sure that you're calling back to your captain and letting them know to turn the ship so that you can get a good shot on that fort. Because the more you keep that fort disabled, the less damage your ship is going to take. If your ship gets shot too many times, you're going to sink. All right? So, we're coming up <coughs> where I can get a good shot on this fort. So, I'm going to make sure that once I'm lined up here, I'm going to hit this fire button. And see that? We hit the fort and the cannon is on fire. That means they can't use it for 15 seconds. Now, my sh captain should be turning the ship so I can get another shot off on that fort. Or we can go for sinking the other ship over there. So we're going to turn and we're going to reduce our speed. All right, we're looking pretty good here, so I'm going to fire on the fishing ship. Okay, that's a good hit. You see that little fire burst there? One more shot. And that guy is sunk. So I need to sink the fishing ship so that I can get my ship docked. If I run into that ship, it's going to damage my ship. So I'm going to turn us back on here for speed. And change the heading of our ship so we can dock. And you also want to make sure you don't crash into the dock. Because if you crash into the dock, it's going to damage your ship. Anything you collide with, land, other ships, docks, the ship detects that. Okay? All right, so there we go. I should be able to make it on land now. So I'm going to pull out my weapons. All right? Now remember, if you fall in the water, you're going to, you're going to drown. So we're going to run this way. And the other thing, too, that's kind of fun about this map is it's a little bit parkour. So you can climb all the surfaces here. Oops, let me help if I put my sword away. So you don't have to run straight up the middle if you don't want. You can climb up the bank going this way. There's little uh, skylights here you can drop down through. Okay, here's the gold. I'm going to grab that. And I'm going to run back to my pirate ship. Now, once I get on my pirate ship, the gold is going to be locked in. So you don't have to worry about your gold getting getting stolen once you get onto the pirate ship. All right? So there we go. It's right back here. But I'm not out of the woods yet. I still have to make it away before the guards sink my ship. So I'm going to turn our speed back up to full here. And we have to get out of range of the cannons. So I'm going max speed. And this would be the time when my crew is, again, trying to get a couple last shots on that fort so they're not hitting us. And then they're also going to help me by helping me dodge cannonballs. So if they see a shot coming in on the left side, um, or if you know nautical, you want to save port and starboard, you can do that too. Um, but you basically just want to make your quick getaway now. You're not in the clear until you're away from the island. Okay, there's a zone around the entire island that detects if the gold is on the ship, and the gold is out of the zone, that's how you win. So you have to make your escape as the pirate. Okay? So there we go. The pirates escaped with the gold. So I won round one, and now it's my turn to defend the town. So that's it for Scourge of the Seas. It's not a very difficult game to play, but it's something that's unique that I don't think you've ever played anything like it before. So I would love it if, if you came here and you haven't had a chance to play it yet, grab a couple friends and try it out. I think you're going to have a really great time. So I hope you have fun and enjoy Rec Room. See ya.